increase our faith tonight. Lord, I'm asking that you would take us to, to, to new levels. We ask that you would increase our measure tonight. And Lord, we just pray let there be high expectation. Let there be an abundance of revelation in this, in this place tonight. And Lord, we welcome the angels tonight. Lord, we welcome signs and wonders and miracles in this place tonight. So come Holy Spirit, even now. We love you. We welcome you in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now, I feel like the Holy Spirit is just going to thicken his presence right now. There's some of you that have been crying out, I got to have more. I'm not satisfied. I got to have more. And God has been stirring your heart. He's been blowing on the coals of your heart, the flames uh, of your heart to ignite it into a mighty blaze. And so, Lord, let tonight be that night. Why wouldn't he do it tonight? Jesus said, blessed are the hungry. <laughs> are you guys hungry tonight? <laughs> yeah. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst. Come on. How many want to be blessed tonight? We've got a hunger and thirst for him and for his righteousness. And you'll be filled. And so, Lord, fill us tonight, we pray. Lord, we want to step out of the natural and into the supernatural realms of the kingdom of God, into that place where all things are possible. Tonight we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Well, welcome. Good to have you. I think we're going to uh, receive an offering right now. If we, are the ushers ready? So we're going to receive an offering. 100% goes to Cat Kerr Ministries. And um, if, you, if uh, you're making a check, make it to the healing rooms. And also, uh, if you need to uh, use a credit card, you can just raise your hand. Or if you need an envelope, uh, we'll give you an envelope for tax purposes. Just raise your hand. So we get, you get many ways you can uh, give tonight. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm really uh, expecting. It's been a great day today so far. We haven't seen anything yet. And so, again, we want to welcome you to, to the Healing Rooms Apostolic Center. And, uh, you know, I, I, just ha I always say this because it happens almost every time we meet together. You just may be healed. Uh, it happens in the glory here all the time. We have so many angels here on assignment. And I just, I just got a feeling some of you are gonna, just going to get healed. You know, a, a lot of times it happens during worship, happens during the Word. And so uh, we definitely have an open heaven, and this is a place where miracles happen. So when you feel the presence of the Lord, we like to say it like this, just reach out. Reach out and touch Him and receive your miracle tonight. All right? I've been excited. Um, we... We're living in supernatural times, and this has been a supernatural week. I'm sure everybody in here knows that Paul Cain went to be with the Lord last Tuesday evening, and today was the afternoon when his body was laid to rest in Santa Maria, and uh, just different signs and wonders happening throughout the week, and and so I know that we're in the midst, we're always in the midst of the supernatural, but it just seems like something special. And so we invited Kat a while ago, and of course, nobody but God knew that Paul was going to go home um, and actually be buried on the first day when she's speaking. And I know that it's not a coincidence. I don't know exactly what it means. Maybe she does. But I, I know stuff like that is not just a coincidence. So we're really blessed and honored, Kat, to have you here again. And I'm sure, how many of you have never been? in a live cat care meeting. Oh, a lot of you. Good. You're in for a treat. So wanna, you can make your way up, Cat. You need to come up around this way. And yeah, you ready? <laughs> oh, and while she's coming up, somebody drop their glasses. So if that's you, you probably can't see, but here they are. <laughs> we'll want to put them up here. So Cat. Um, well, pro those of you who don't know, the Lord's been taking her to heaven for several years and showing her things and bringing her back and allowing her to share with us. So let's just welcome Kat Kerr. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Woo! 
I know uh, some people know why I'm saying that. Some may not. Uh, when the army of heaven goes to battle against the darkness, that is their war cry. Woohoo! Why? Because they're excited. They're going to crush the enemy's plans over you, right? They're going to crush them. They're going to pull down strongholds that have been rising against you. That's why they were created. Newsflash from heaven. They weren't created to protect heaven. <laughs> they were made by the creator of heaven. They didn't even get to kick Lucifer and one third of the angels out. They didn't get to do that. Michael held them and the father sent a lightning bolt, a million megawatts of love from himself and took him out. And then one third of the angels went out the same way. So they've been waiting a long time to uh, war on our behalf, full time. Amen? I may or may not give you scripture for that tonight. Go look it up. <laughs> I think most of us know that Jesus was the Lord of... Say it loud. The host is the name of the army of heaven. Yes, they're still part of the angel tribes, but they're different in many ways. Uh, the ones under Gabriel have many different positions and uh, jobs in heaven and on the earth, and they look more like us. They're the ones who look more like us. The army of heaven mostly does not look anything like us. They're creatures. Most of them are creatures. They're fierce looking. They're not going to be pretty boys with harps. That's what the Holy Spirit says. <laughs> they're not going to be pretty boys with harps. However, there was one time when they had to take the place of the worship angels, which were the one-third that were kicked out. The only ones Lucifer got were the ones he was over. He was over one-third of the angels. It was the worship angels. Uh, obviously, if he was the one who led them in worship all the time in heaven, uh, I'm just going to give you full-out revelation because I, I want to take advantage of all the time I have. So if you didn't know this, he used to step inside God to lead worship. He covered over the very heart of God with his wings, which were embellished with gems. He had gems on his back, on his front. People go, well, he had just a few. No, he had really hundreds of them on him. And when God made him, he made mountings like in a ring. And every gem was mounted in a mounting like a ring that you would wear, like this one here. And he was beautiful, which is one of the reasons why he ended up by falling from pride, from his beauty. Also, he thought he was smarter than God, and that was, uh, that was busted. <laughs> Mythbuster. <laughs> it's okay to laugh, because you're going to laugh a lot tonight, all right? Heaven laughs. Every time the devil loses down here, all of heaven roars. Yes, they know what's going on. And today they were at attendance um, for Paul Cain with Paul Cain. Not talking about the body. Talking about his spirit man. Everyone gets to see their own homecoming. Isn't that nice? So wear colors and play lots of music and dance. Because that's what they'll be doing in heaven. News flash from heaven number two. They don't have a funeral in heaven when you come home. Say amen. amen. You shouldn't expect one. We should have a, a party zone down here. When we send people off instead of a funeral home, someone open a party zone. I promise you'll make more money than other people with funeral homes because even the world will want to send theirs off wherever they think they're going. <laughs> They'll pick a party. Everybody say Amen. So that is a witty idea I've been giving up for years. I don't think anybody's done it yet, so there you go. The more real heaven becomes to the body of Christ, people will want to send them off with a real celebration because the, the reality of what heaven is and what they're going to be experiencing there, it won't make sense to have a sad funeral while they're watching from the party. I'm a seer, that means I see. <laughs> In the unseen realm, okay? <laughs> you missed that. <laughs> I'm really happy today because I got to experience all that heaven was doing and what was going on. 
with Paul Cain and his mother and his sisters, and you know his family that's up there, and the others who were attending up there watching his service. He enjoyed every funny thing that was told. He likes to be real, so he liked all the re reality of who he was. He liked that personal side of him being talked about. So next time you plan a family member's homegoing service, tell some jokes because they will laugh. I was at a, a service one time and back home, and it was, um, I'm trying to remember the guy's name. I remember McLellan. He was part of Story Side B, and he died suddenly. And I came into his service. I didn't know anyone, but I was coming to bring some books about heaven to his family. The Holy Spirit told me to. And I saw him watching from the portal. That was really difficult, you know, to try to pretend to be sad. And I never wear black. It's okay if you, if you go to somewhere where they're expecting, you know, to do what is proper, uh, not to upset them, but uh, no one's wearing black in heaven. They're not. And they are having a party. And there was, I saw Ron McLellan, thank you, my best friend, Holy Spirit. He makes up for what I don't know. You know, helps my human head lots of times because they kind of took that away from me. I used to be kind of brilliant, really. Then they made me like eight years old. <laughs> Life is much easier being that way. You know what? You don't worry about things. You don't think about what's going to happen five years down the road when you don't even know. Or you already plan, you know, prepare for disasters or stuff. I never got that, really. Um, if we're over the weather, then we shouldn't be concerned about the weather. We rule over it. Amen? In case you didn't know. News bulletin number three, right? It's number three. Are you keeping track? You're going to get a gift. <laughs> number three, <laughs> Jesus was over the weather. We are joint heirs. We get to be over the weather. Isn't that great? You're going to see that more and more. I'm serious. You're going to see it more and more. Things stopped, like stop. Can't wait for that to happen. Meteorologists might have to get another job. Not making fake news, by the way. It don't work now, and it's not going to work when it's not actually happening. What was I talking about? <laughs> number three, what was number three? <laughs> oh, we're over the weather. Jesus was over the weather, and he tried so hard to teach his disciples. He really was, in case you didn't know, they were in boot camp with him for three years. It wasn't just watch what I do. It's learn what I do and then do it, right? He was going to go, he was going to go back for some R&R, &R, and he had to make sure they understood how this whole thing works, being a joint heir with Christ. What do you have? We have. He said so himself. The things I did, how point blank can you get? The things and the works I have done, you will do. Well, you forgot the first part. You will do also okay these are just the works you got to do the works say we got to do the works then we get to do the greater say it louder okay like you're excited <laughs> well i don't just try things i actually do them there's a difference i'm just going to try that means you're not making much of a plan about that right but doing it The works I did, you will do, say do, do. Also, also, and greater works, you will do. I think that means we're supposed to be doing something. We're entering into a busy season. A busy season operating in the supernatural, not just talking about it. A busy season handling the wealth of the wicked, not just talking about it. A busy season, living, not just existing, doing the more. Say the more. more. The more is amazing. Oh, you're getting better. <laughs> I am just as passionate about living holy as I am about being funny. And I will tell you why. I have, to, I have to give you both sides of heaven. 
There's two sides in heaven. There's holy profound. The other whole half of heaven is funny. Say funny. funny. Everybody have, they've thought forever and for ages that it would be boring in heaven maybe because all they do is worship. Let me tell you, you stand in front of him, it's not boring. Whether you're staring, feeling like you're going to faint, melt into the ground, you know, you feel like you don't have breath in you because of just being near him. Yeah, it is an honor, a privilege, and amazing when you worship, and it's not normal. Not even worship is normal in heaven. You ride on it. You create things as you're worshiping him. You're creating when you worship. You're giving the devil a big black eye and a very bad day when you worship him. You are shredding, bashing, and crushing his fake little wannabe kingdom in the second heaven when you worship him. It's amazing from doing one thing for him, to honor him, to bless him, to adore him, what destruction you do against the kingdom of darkness. That's my favorite second thing. I don't do demons. I do do Jesus, though. I love him. I honor him. I can't do anything without him. It's because of him and with him, and it is his plan. Even the pink hair is his plan. Because he's not boring. There's nothing boring about him. There's absolutely nothing boring about heaven. There's nothing boring about our future. That's like in the next few days. The more you believe things are real, the more real they will become. And that is actually a spiritual truth. It's a spirit realm truth. The more you believe it is real and talk about it being real and write about it being real and actually acting in it being real, the more real it's going to become to you. It's the original realm. It's the eternal realm. It's not the temporary realm. This is a temporary life for you. It's a temporary place to live, a temporary to do things, because this earth is not eternal. I know people have worked it out in their own mind with their head research and they're looking up stuff and sometimes assuming, because I've read a lot of translations and someone kind of miss it. I know because the Holy Spirit shows me those scriptures. Then he'll show me 30 scriptures of it being translated. <laughs> I take the word for the value it gives. It's real. It is for us. It should prepare us to accelerate us, to propel us into high places you never dreamed of. Doing things you never dreamed of. We are living examples of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit on this earth. That's why you're here. You're here to be like them, look like them, and act like them. Now, I don't see any failure in any of that. I don't see hopelessness, worthlessness. I don't see fear at all. One of the first things the Holy Spirit gives me these kingdom quotes. That's what we decided to call them. There's so many. We don't know what to call them. We can just say a quote. The Holy Spirit is a kingdom quote. Was don't let fear interfere. That was a good one. Right? Teach me never to fear. Never say never. At all. In any way. Fear does not control our life. We do not partner with fear. He didn't put fear in us when he made us. We're supposed to be fearless and timeless. Everybody should be yelling, I receive it. I receive it. Say timeless. timeless. We're supposed to be timeless. Who said you had to die? I'm being serious. Not funny now. Serious. John didn't have to die, did he? Say no. Didn't Jesus say to the disciples, what is it? So in other words, he's saying it doesn't matter what they think. <laughs> he probably actually said that. He's a character. 
He's the son of God, but he is a character, the probably one of the biggest characters in heaven except for Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit's got him beat by, by that much. Who they call the drama king. Jesus is the king of kings. Holy Spirit is the drama king. You haven't only seen just a little bit of his activity so far. Wait until the full-fledged release on this earth. He's excited. He's excited about what's about to happen in us. They've been waiting a long time. Say they've been waiting a long time. If I say the word they, I mean the Trinity. They're not boring, none of them. They know how to step inside of each other and be one, one thing. That's how it happens. I know, I was eight years old. Father caught me up before the throne and said, I'm going to show you how the three can be one. And a five-year-old can understand it. Man's head knowledge has expanded it and expanded it. And all kind, I could use every other kind of word explaining that, you know, multiplied it, whatever you want to call it. Made it look amazing, powerful, and hard to understand. It's simple. They can step inside of each other. Jesus said, Father, I pray that one day that they be one even as we are one. Because he steps inside his Father all the time. When he was the Word, he did the same thing. I didn't forget I was only on number three bulletin, by the way. I got some more. I was the least likely person to anyone on this earth would have chosen to do this. Okay, I'm from a tribe, like a real one. 15 people and an alligator. <laughs> and an iguana. Innumerable amount of toad frogs and lizards and spiders. We grew up with them in our home. I had seven brothers, what did you think? In Florida, you add that up, that's what that comes to. Sell your bike to some kid for a pig. Bring him home, wrap him up in clothes, and you have a new pet. <laughs> Overnight, we never knew what was going to be in our home. So I didn't need anyone's opinions. I was never part of a group or a clique. I had a tribe. God did that to kill me. <laughs> I'm a dead person standing before you. Dead people are wonderful for God to use. They're not full of self. They don't have their own opinion, and the devil cannot use a dead person. The more dead you are to yourself, the more dangerous you are against hell. So there are many ways to kill me before I even grew up. And, you know, it doesn't matter. I mean, I love everyone in this room. I loved all my siblings. I survived. I conquered. I was a leader. Wasn't liked all the time, but I was a big help to my parents. I honored my parents greatly every day of my life. I loved them. I didn't want to hurt them. They needed help. Say, parents, they need help. Pastors, they need more help. <laughs> I'm grateful people are going to start a church. Oh, no, I've already died. I don't need a church. I don't need a whole congregation of people. Although I love them, I bless you all, but I really bless the pastor. Because they die every day to be that. Amen? You'll notice that God didn't actually send his son to be a pastor. Did you ever notice that? He actually sent him as a businessman. God loves business people. They're easy. They know how to listen. They know how to complete things that are given to them. They don't leave things out, forget things, ignore things. They do a job. Amen? So he sent his son as a businessman who could easily connect with the sinners. And he did. They ate with him all the time. They liked him. He was exciting. He was interesting. He was funny. His favorite job was to offend the hierarchy He was good at it, and yet lived holy, did miracles, raised the dead. They took money from people for spotted lambs. They weren't high on God's list. 
and he had to train his disciples. I know, he only had them for three years, and I think most of them finally got it after he left. But they did. Give him credit, they did. But in the beginning, I'm sure Jesus would go to the Father when he went to the mountain all the time and say, are you sure? <laughs> I have two that fight all the time. They brawl over women. I have one who wants to be everything and tell everybody that. That would be Peter. I have a treasurer you know that cheats all the time, right? You know that. <laughs> you know he takes money all the time. I know you know that too. And I have a tax collector, and every time he walks down the road to go minister, we get stones thrown at us because they don't like him. I don't know anybody who likes tax collectors. They didn't back then either. So he did not give him the best or the easiest to train. And I know because I was saying something to God about my, some of my staff. <laughs> and he said, I didn't make it easy for my son, and my conversation ended with that subject. Especially when he caught me up and took me back and I got to walk through a whole day of their lives. Like in their first year of being together. All right, God, I can make it. God has a plan for you. Every single person is important to him. And I do know this. Your birth was timed on this earth. God created time. He knew you before you were born because you played inside of him. He saw you, if there was time. He saw you all the time. How great is he that he was huge. He could make himself as big as he wanted to. You know, he walked on the mountains. He was out where there was nothing. And he spoke and the word would step out of him and make space. That God would make himself small enough to step inside himself and play with you. He did. Say, he's not a man. He's God. And even being that great, he knew everything about you. Knew the mistakes. Knew our faults. Knew everything. But had great hope and great plans for you to do great things. So it's no mistake you're here now in this age instead of the ages before this time. You're here right on time. For the accelerated time, for the more of God, for the kingdom age, for the time to command the host of heaven, handle the wealth, buy host cities for him to use. Because he's not poor. He knows the names of your children that you'll have even before you get married. He knows them. And he put them in your family line on purpose. In this generation that's here now, this is a special generation for God. It's the beginning of the group and type of people that will remain until all things be fulfilled. Some will. And the Bible says there'll be a group of people like that, a group and type of people, a generation. That word generation means a group and type of people. It doesn't mean like 30 years or actually that word in the Bible that says, Jesus says uh, that there'll be a group and type of people on earth that will be here when all things be fulfilled, including the coming of him. That word means a group and type of people. That word generation means that. There will be a group and type of people on this earth that also says in the Bible that would taste of the powers, say powers, powers. Of, the age of the age to come. Yeah. That would be the millennial age. Of course, there's people now that say they're not going to be a millennium. I go by what the Bible says. There will be a millennium. There will be a tribulation. God calls a bump in the road. It will happen. That's on his timeline in heaven. So no matter what other people have come up with or assume or have put in translations, I promise you it's going to happen and you can't make it happen or not happen anyway. So to me, it's not worth arguing over. 
God's going to work out his plan all the way to the end, right? I'm excited to know that I'm part of that generation that will taste of the powers of the age to come. That's why you need revelation. Because that, that, all that comes from the heart of God. He already knows what it's going to look like. He knows what's going to happen. So he chose you to be here to be a part. Say amen. amen. That word means so be it. Might as well say it. going to happen. There's no one on the earth, in the earth, around the earth, say it's round. I got to say that. The Holy Spirit won't let it go, okay? So that's him. Say, the earth is round, not flat. It don't have edges. You may say that improperly. It does not have edges. There you go. The Holy Spirit corrected me. Use proper grammar. But I'm eight. That's how they say it. <laughs> there is a whole group of people that sincerely spend so much time and money to try to prove the earth is flat. I'd rather use that money and that time and energy ruling, right? I've flown many times, and I didn't get halfway around the world, and all of a sudden, here's the flat earth. And I'm flying it. Didn't all of a sudden go, wait, whoosh, now you're on the other side. No, I went around. Besides, I've already been up over the earth. It's round. God made it round. Says he sits on the circle of the earth, not the square. <laughs> You'd be surprised how serious they are. They think NASA has spent billions of dollars faking it. And none of that stuff is real. I don't know who got that thought, but it didn't come from heaven, amen? So just rest assured that it's around, okay? Been there, seen it. It is round. And when I was shown it, God caught me up in space, up into like, like first space. Not, I've been way up there, but the first time he caught me up and showed me the earth, he put a grid. You know, like a grid, you know what that is? Yeah, a grid. It was round, and he put it right on the earth. Hooked together. And then he began to draw things on this grid that was his plan that was called space planning. That was also the Holy Spirit's joke. Because out in space, put the grid and plan, right? He uses every opportunity to be funny. So he did show me his space planning for like the next hundred years. That was probably 15, 20 years ago when he showed me that. That doesn't mean the earth is going to end in a hundred years, because I've been taken further than that. And no tribulation had happened. I know some people think it's supposed to be right now. Well, if it was, it would be. People get to heaven, they all find out, man, we wasted so much time sitting on our rapture rug. <laughs> Should have rolled it up. Put it in the closet. <laughs> well, you've, if you've been around a long time, you realize I went to church Every day it was open, and every day someone said, Jesus could come tomorrow. <laughs> and in my, I'm like little, this is like little, I had these thoughts. Why would he have all these plans in the Bible and go, okay, now forget that, we're just all going home. I mean, he gave my dad a long plan. I mean, knew, like, my dad knew him, he gave him a long plan. I'm like, he's not going nowhere. We, we haven't done what God told us to do yet. And God said, well, many people are in fear. And they know one day that will happen, so they want it to come. So to them, that's logical. They don't understand a lot, especially in the book of Revelation. Say, Revelations, Revelations. means revelations. revelations. That means something you don't know. So God said, I'm calling you a revelator. Me, you know why he did that? So people couldn't call me a false prophet. <laughs> they don't know what a revelator is, so they didn't ever say nothing against it. They couldn't say, well, uh, she's not a terrible pastor. No, we can't call her an evangelist. She doesn't go out and win lots of millions. We can't call her that. So, uh, 
can't call her a prophet, she's a revelator, don't know what that is, so we'll ignore all of that. <laughs> a revelator is someone who reveals, like John did, caught up, showing the future, the future, <laughs> I don't know what that was, that was a blinglish, write that down and don't forget it. I know Jen is writing it down right now. If I say a word, she goes, you did a blinglish, that means you blended some words together, okay? I won't explain it. <laughs> yes, you've been there. I'm sure people have been there, right? You've been there. Well, at least I'm not talking about noses putting the animals on the ark tonight. That's Moses and Noah doing it together. <laughs> One time I even said Adam did it. <laughs> I did hear from people. <laughs> we'll have a bloopers thing one day and just put them all on there, go there and look at it. But now I forget what I'm talking about. Who is listening? <laughs> a revelator. <laughs> You're right. So see, I, I hear them all the time. I have to, right? <laughs> when you're eight, you need help. So he didn't pick me to be a professor. You know, I was graduated middle of my class, like literally middle. We had 600 graduating students. And we have a lot of people come to Florida to go to school. I guess they like it. We're pretty laid back there, you know. And uh, so it's a nice place to live if you want to come live someplace different. Good, go, good vacation time. Uh, try not to come in August really hot. <laughs> so being a revelator is a little bit different. Uh, that usually does mean prophet, just so you've wondered. You know, uh, John was. Amen. And it's okay. I love doing that. But I love being with my father, my heavenly father, him, all the time. I know why Jesus loved him so much. I know why he wanted to be with him. I know why he went away to the mountain to spend time with him. I know how hard it was for him to leave home and come here. Okay? He was not poor. He didn't live poor. Say, Jesus was not poor. He became poor when he left heaven. Because heaven is certainly not poor. There's nothing poor up there. Nothing. Splendor and wonder and beauty. You couldn't afford to build the house that your mansion that your mother lives in. You wouldn't even have the right substances to make it. The walls sing. Literally, they sing. They leave, go on tours, come back, they sing hello to them. The trees uproot themselves and they come and sit in your house and be your friend for a while. You go back to the friendly forest. Is this okay? It's not going to be normal. No, you can't be normal. If you've been going to heaven for 20 years, you'd be normal to heaven. They tell funny stories a lot. Bob Jones hasn't stopped. Most people, when they go there, no matter how they were here, they're all happy. They love jokes. They love to tell funny stories, hear funny stories. They love it. They make plans for people before they come. They knew Paul was coming. They all knew Paul was coming. There's a place you go in heaven where you find that out. And you go in this beautiful, amazing building. And these supernatural monitors, much better than ours, but these are good. And you can see who's coming home, who's about to come home to heaven. Everybody starts getting things ready. They're so excited. They're, they're beside themselves. They want to make sure they're all there, say all, all, to meet you at the gate. They have a huge celebration. They, they plan one themselves. Heaven plans one. The throne room plans one. Uh, people have celebrations in the street over someone coming home. Say home. home. 
It's because that's where you came from. We were loaned to the earth for a while. When you go home, you are really home, and you're not dead. They don't throw parties for people who aren't alive. <laughs> They have huge celebrations, lots of music, lots of food, everyone meeting one another, visiting. Jesus welcomes you if he isn't taking you himself. Sometimes he does take people. He comes in his own chariot, flaming horses, picks you up, and takes you up to heaven. Then when you get out, you see the sea of the mass of people waiting to greet you. And then Jesus walks you up the steps of the throne to give you back to the Father. And then the Father reaches out of that glory that moves in and out of him, the living colors of the bow coming in and out. His eyes flames of fire, passion for you. He's just glowing. And he reaches his arms out and grabs you. He says, welcome home, my son. Or welcome home, my daughter. You go home as his children. Say, we are his offspring. Everyone gets their own mansion. You don't have to share it with your brother or sister. I'll have my own one day. It's made exactly the way you would love it. But it's made with his presence in the walls and the floors. And it's not going to be a normal shape. Trust me, it's not. All your pets will be there. They'll be waiting to greet you eating your food <laughs> at your table. Your family members will all have gifts for you. For every year you've been apart, they will get a gift that represents that year and put it in your mansion. After your welcome home party in the throne room, which could last for quite a while, <laughs> your family will come get you and take you to your own mansion. Then they'll have another celebration. Everybody laughs and filled with joy to see all the ones they loved before. Little tiny babies they never got to raise. They get their children given to them to raise. The same one that you, that didn't make it all the way through. Amen. God keeps them. They live with your grandparents or whoever. When they get there, they'll go get them and help raise them for a while. I love the story of a mother um, they lost their son. He was either seven or eight. He was hit by a car. And they, of course, they, they grieved over him but knew he was in heaven. And I think it was like 20 years later or 30 years later, one or the other, <laughs> she died on the operating table and was caught up to heaven, saw her seven-year-old son playing in the streets of gold. He goes, Mom! Wow, Mom, you're here. This is so exciting. Your mom, I'm so glad you're here. And she goes, what have you been doing? He goes, I've been playing with my friends. What do you think I've been doing? He'd been living with his grandfather and playing with he, all, all these friends in the streets of gold. They were playing and he was laughing. And he said, but you can't come yet because it's not your time. And so she came back. Never forgot it. And her and her husband went around the world talking about it. You will be known as you were known, except you'll look better, like a whole lot better. You'll have hair. Most guys are, wear their hair about down to their shoulders, don't have, you know, that's going to change y'all. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> it's going to change guys, um, unless you really want like a buzz cut or something, you know, Marine Corps. Urgh. My husband may still have one. I might be surprised to see him along here. <laughs> He's still with me, by the way. Another way to kill me, but that was okay. <laughs> it's all worth everything. It's worth it all. No matter what you surrender, give up, misdoing, it's worth it. And you'll be so happy when you stand before God and you're welcomed home. Knowing that you gave everything you could. I'm not saying you have to walk around poor, okay? That was the devil's plan. 
not God's. His plan is to bless us. Say bless us. Bless and us. prosper us. It'll be worth it. Some people have already seen Jesus here, right? How many people have seen Jesus? Let me see. Either in a vision or dream or in reality, if you've seen him. How many people have encountered an angel? There's usually a lot. There's a lot of people here. It's going to happen. That's part of the acceleration. That's part of the more. It's a lot of the more, actually, that we will see angels. And they will probably be talking to us. They came from God. Ignore what we've all been told our whole lives. Don't talk to angels. <laughs> they did in the Bible. Amen. There's going to be a lot more of that. Angelic, not just visitation, because what we're going to experience is a habitation. Heaven's not coming for a visit. Say, heaven, heaven. is not coming for a visit. They're coming for a habitation. You are part of the habitation. You are. All of you sitting here. Say, I'm alive. I'm alive. And breathing. breathing. I'm part of the habitation. <laughs> what God is about to do on this earth is not just take a territory here and there. What the habitation will be is in us. Say, in us. That's the part of the habitation. That's why man won't be able to control it like they have in the past. Say, God will be in charge. Will be in charge. It's a habitation. And it will remain for a long time. He's going to transform this world. Right now, he is shifting governments so he can shape nations. It's part of the platform he's giving us in the habitation. He's got platforms for us. That's the place that we will operate from and speak from, shake things, cause things to be released, to change for him. It's not a lot of how it's always been in the past. That's why it's a new thing. Say a new thing. It's time for the new thing. It's where we will be ruling. It's one of the purposes that Christ died for us. That's why he went into hell and wasted it. Took back the authority and dominion that Adam had given away. He gave it to us. He also gave his power over all the power of the enemy. Say, we have power over all the power of the enemy. Say, he did not give that to the angels. That's why we need to command them. They can't just go tear up any demon they see. They just can't do that. They do it. In, in the past, it was from answers to prayer, and prayer is never going to go away. It's never going to go away. He loves prayer. Prayer is powerful. It's going to get even more powerful. Especially when you command part of an army of heaven. And they pull down strongholds for you. And crush the plans of darkness. We need this. Say, we need it. We need it. To, rule to rule in this day. Say, every king, every king. gets a kingdom, kingdom and gets an army. gets an army. If we're part of the kingdom, we're part of the kingdom. we get part of the army. Do you ever see a king, a natural king on this earth, try to rule without one? They wouldn't go very far, would they? They'd be overrun, beaten up, things stolen, things killed. Sounds like the devil. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. That's what the army prevents. Heaven's army was designed, created, and made, every one of them, unique and different, but they are fierce. They have one job. The ones under Gabriel have many different jobs, many different positions to do many different things. But, but Michael is over one specific part, and that is the army. They have a headquarters, 
They have barracks. They have training fields. They're all in the sky of heaven. Ran maneuvers for ages. In the past, Jesus would go send uh, Michael to gather the army from the far ends of heaven to fight on behalf of Israel. People say, Amen. Amen. It's in the Bible. Go read it. Sometimes they even fought the flesh. Did you know that? Yeah, some of them could fight the flesh. In this time on earth, it's mostly battles in the spirit, battling the demonic, even those in the high places, the principalities and the powers, the things, the beings and wickedness in high places. Many of those high places will be shredded and pulled down. Say, our weapons... They are mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. That's one of the things the army does. I can only share what I have been told, and I can only tell you what I have been shown. Shown and told. That's what I talk about. But they didn't just show me things and tell me things. I had to live it. It was something I was trained in. It was for the body of Christ. So I had to live it to let you know it's real and it really does work. If you follow heaven's protocol, say on earth as it is in heaven. That's what we've been asking for. For generations, we should have expected it. Jesus bushwhacked us all. He did. He told me. He said, I knew if I taught them that and said to say that, eventually it would come. It would be the one thing I could get them to agree on. No matter what denomination, they would all declare that prayer. Because they need us to call things in. Is that right? You have not because you ask not. If you've ever said to Jesus, I'll give you anything you want, no matter what it is, where it is, what time it is, I give you permission to use me. Has anyone ever said something like that? Let me see your hands. <laughs> well, <I'll> get ready. Because <laughs> he's calling in those words. Yes. It's going to be amazing. Say amazing. Heaven is amazing. It's going to be amazing here. We can live on earth like they live in heaven. Which is mainly his will being done. His way. Say his way. His way. Not, our way. Not our way. That's part of the more. He's going to do a new thing. He gives revelation. And then ways for you to use that revelation... It means a lot of things are going to change. So if you're stuck in your own mind or your own mindset of what you think is going to happen, and because it didn't, it's not going to, you need to just throw that away. Because he does have a timeline in his own throne room, and those dots on that timeline is when his things are going to happen, regardless of what anybody on the earth is doing. It's his sovereign will. And what right now, this time we're in, it's on his timeline. It is. Many of the generals are going home. Doesn't mean they'll be oblivious to what we're doing. It means they'll know all about it after they get there. And the thing they'll be celebrating is us who are still down here being a part of it. So God really needs us right now. Isn't that amazing? He doesn't make mistakes. He didn't make a mistake choosing me, although I probably would have never chosen. <laughs> Except when he asked me, I said yes. Say it's important to say yes to being chosen. Many are called, but few are chosen because they don't choose. That's why many aren't chosen. 
He can't make you do it, right? You're called, you're being called, but he can't make you do that. You have to choose yes. And when you do that, you're saying, yes, I want to be chosen. And then you're chosen. What does it take to be chosen? Yes. Say, choose yes. yes. Then you got to be willing. He makes it a little bit, you know. Got to be willing and obedient. Say, willing obedience next. <laughs> Say, surrender is not control. A lot of people think it is. Because, you know, God does have, he does have, um, I'm trying to think of the natural earth word. It's like not there. <laughs> <laughs> he does have guidelines, is that right? Even Jesus had them that he operated by. Jesus didn't just pick things on his own all the time. What did he say? I do. Yeah, what his father said, right? What he showed him and what he told him, that's what he did. That's why we need revelation. Otherwise, we're going to get man's mindset on everything. And that hasn't worked well, has it? <laughs> He's not going to abandon the church. I've heard all kinds of things from people. He's going to abandon the church. It's just going to go away, burn down. We don't need it anymore. Let's get rid of it. Well, he's not saying that to me. He's going to set it on fire. Amen. This is a time to be willing and obedient if you want to eat the fat of the land. And Jesus did ask us to pray about one other thing. Pray that my people, say we are his people. Be willing in the day of his power. Well, obviously, if he's going to give us revelation to operate like he does, and part of that is power. He said so. I'll give you power over all the power of the enemy. There's one right there. He has given us power. And he does have power. So if this is the day of his power, the biggest thing, the most important thing is remember the willing and obedient thing. What he asked probably won't seem natural or normal to you. It wasn't natural or normal to ask me to have pink hair. I wasn't a pink hair person. If I liked it, he wouldn't have asked me. <laughs> it's better than camel hair. I'll have pink hair any day over camel hair. It smells. It's stiff. Not comfortable. And he had to wrap himself in it, okay? My pink hair is a test. It divides asunder the spirit from the flesh. So those who trash or bash it are in the flesh. Are we supposed to walk in the flesh? Say no. We're supposed to walk in the? So people don't have to tell me if they're hearing their flesh or hearing their spirit. It's the way they react to the pink hair. Now people who like pink hair, they think it's amazing. So the world must be passing their test. Because they all love it. That's amazing. You look amazing. What do you do? I'm a spokesperson for heaven. I've been there. And then they all say the same thing. They don't say, you're a liar, you're a false prophet. They, don't say they go, what was it like? What was it like? Is it beautiful? Is it amazing? Is it real? Is, is God real? Is there a God? And you go, oh, yeah, there is a God. And you lived inside of him before you came here. Okay, that makes him interested. Not bashing. Amen? Try that next time. <laughs> you did live in him. You moved in and out of him. He was your very existence. You had your very existence in him. That's why he knew you. That's why he saw you before he sent you here. You're wonderfully and perfectly made. Your soul is one of the most amazing parts of you of all. You change your very life by what you feed it. 
You change how you feel about things by what you say yourself. If you don't like you, then change. Change what you're saying, change what you're watching, change what you let other people say around you because you need to guard your heart. What goes in there is what you will become. Amen? If you've never heard that before, it's revelation on your soul. Your soul is what you are. People say, well, I'm this and that. No. Adam became a living. Say it loud. He became a living soul. That's how important it is to God. That's why he gave you a soul. You could choose yourself. You could choose with your will. You could think about things, choose it, and then you do it. And then your emotions display who and what you believe with your life. It's probably one of the least talked about things in the church is the soul. Growing up, I always heard that it was bad. I went, but God made it, right? He, it's one-third of us. Is that right? We'll always have our soul. How, why would he make it bad? It's a powerful thing, and it's a good thing, because you can fill yourself with God, and then you'll be like him. You can talk about him, then you'll really believe he is real. You can feed your soul 24 hours a day. Your body gets fed a few times a day. Your spirit man gets fed once a week. Most people go to church once a week. But your soul is fed all the time by what you watch, what you say, what people say to you. You can be crushed by tragedies, and you can't, you can't forget it. You hang on to it. Somebody can wound and hurt you, and it stays there forever. Your soul has layers. And it collects things in those layers. That's why you have a memory. But your layers are supposed to be used for different, something different than that. Every layer of you looks like you. Who wants revelation on the soul? Let me see your hand. I was shown one. And the father spent four hours with me, earth time. I never usually know, but I looked at my clock. And I was talking to him. Then he just catches me up. It begins to show me a human soul, what it looked like, how he made it, why did he make it that way, how people can cause their soul to prosper all the time, and then they'll live in divine health. There was a requirement about that prospering. It says, even as your soul prospers, you will prosper and you will be in health. That word be means live. It's called divine health. So I... Since I learned about that, since the Father taught me about that, he said people can loose, with the keys of the kingdom, you can loose things out of your soul. When you loose it, it's gone. And that doesn't matter what it is. He started giving me this very long list of things that you can loose from your soul. And he said, I know most people bind the devil with the keys to the kingdom, but they mostly never talk about the loosing thing. What are they going to do with the loosing key? And yet the binding key is more important to bind the things of God to your soul because then they can't be taken away. What you choose to bind to your soul about God will never be taken from you. And so people, I know, you know, if you still want to bind the devil, go ahead and do it. I'd rather lose the stuff out of my soul that he tried putting there. No, if you have an anger issue and you're anger, anger, angry all the time, you don't even know you're just angry. It's all that comes out of you. It's in your soul. You choose with your will to loose that, that anger. Then heaven comes down and they pull it out. Say what's loosed on earth is loosed in heaven. You know how amazing you would be if you didn't have all that junk in there? Especially wounds. And wounds can keep you from the things of God as much as sin can. Don't leave a wound in you because then the enemy will come and try to use it. Amen? So, tomorrow night, not tonight, we're going to do a soul checkup. I hope you're coming. Who's coming tomorrow night? I hope everybody's coming, I hope. You don't want to miss tomorrow night. This is just the introduction. We're going to do some spiritual warfare with the host. 
They'll be excited. You may leave in an army if you don't have one. They were made for us, amen? They won't let you worship them. They don't have time for that. <laughs> and neither do you, amen? But tomorrow night, we're going to have some fire sent. The angels are already outside waiting, but they're going to do that tomorrow night. I did this recently where, I mean, people were literally flaming. Like they were flaming. Because this is time to start getting, I want to say, drops of it. <laughs> the fire of God is amazing. It comes from himself, inside him. Say, our God is a consuming fire. I'm about to get consumed. It's one of the most asked, asked things by the body of Christ. Send the fire. I want the fire. Give me the fire. Let me be consumed. Let me burn for you. It burns everything off the walls of your heart. I mean, literally, make your, your heart white. You are filled with boldness like you've never had before in your life. You're fearless. You're bold. You, you got filled with God, the fire. It burns it out. And then he puts him himself in there. He heaps more stones of fire inside of you. Those came from God too. Stones of fire. I find in one translation said that they were, they were flaming stones that Satan left on some other planet. That was in a Bible. And I already knew what they were, so God made me look up like 29 different translations to go see what they say it is. I'm like, they missed that one. No, they didn't ever belong to Lucifer, okay? They were inside God. Or he burns with this fire for you. Under the water, they burn in the river of life that's in him. The river flows out of him. The gemstones flow out of him. Even the steps of the throne room have gemstones. They flow out of heaven and become the crystal sea. It's called the crystal sea because there's gemstones in it, not sand. That's why it's called crystal. Faceted gemstones. They're all over heaven. They all come from one place from the Father. And the fire would burn inside of him, and Lucifer would step in, and there's this holy mountain inside God. Say, God is not a man. He doesn't look the same inside that we do. But we live there. That's why we like sparkly things. Way back in our, way back in our spirit man, we remember that. We remember that. There's something that connects when we look at something that's brilliant and beautiful. Uh, gemstones represent the love of God. His love, his revelation upon this rock. I know he said Peter was a rock. When God says rock in the Bible, he's talking about a gemstone. You know that white rock, that white rock or stone you're going to get when you go home to heaven and there's a name on it that only he and you know? It's a white diamond. It's not a river rock. <laughs> Every syllabus I ever saw showed a river rock when it talked about that, that stone. So inside is eternity. You never see the end. There's no end inside of him. No end. And we ran up and down this mountain and we slid down the river of life and would jump on the stones of fire through the flames. We lived in those flames. You're about to get baptized with them. It's amazing. I don't even know what time it is. I better check. What time is it? <laughs> oh, my, my, see Jen, she's at it. You didn't finish talking about Ron McClellan. <laughs> Remember, I was at his, his service, right? And I, I come in with these books, and his parents and grandparents are sitting on the front row. I didn't know him so, but I knew a couple people there at uh, Celebration Church. They let me come in, and I just was going to wait till everything was over. And they were, everybody with their line going by the casket, and he had this 
bright yellow suit on. I mean, bright with his big white tie. And, and he had the biggest fro I've ever seen on a human. They had to stick it down in the casket. And as I was walking up, to, I was walking up, I looked up. And I was trying not to laugh out loud because it was an open portal and he was watching his service. And now this is a band, right? Band in a van, traveling, telling jokes nonstop, doing sock puppets, you know, crazy stuff. He did crazy things in the van with the guys. And his band was there. And they were telling the funniest stories. And every time they say something funny, he would go like this. Ah! Ah! And his hair would go. <laughs> so I'm here. I'm looking, I look at the casket. And then I look up there. I try so hard not to laugh. He was laughing. Up, and there was a lot of funny stories, right? So I'm like, this is just this crazy. It was so much fun. And so I went back, sat down, and Deanna came up, and I gave out the books. And um, I didn't know who his parents were. I knew who his wife was, and her mom, dad were there, and uh, gave them one. And I didn't know that was his father sitting there. So I was telling, you know, his wife, this is a book about heaven. I really think it will bless you. And I started to turn away. And, and the Holy Spirit would tell me, take an extra one. So, of course, willing and obedient, I had an extra one in a little bag. Wondering who I was going to give it to. And he grabbed my arm and said, did you say that book was about heaven? I said, yes, I, I've been there. He says, can I have that book? And I said, yes, yes, you can have it. And he goes, well, I'm, I'm, I'm Ron's dad. Well, well, then this was for you because I didn't know you were going to be here. But he told me to bring it, so this is your book. And a, a few months later, I get a phone call. It's always in the middle of the night. And it's his parents. And they're undone. They are so full of joy and celebration after reading about what heaven was like. They already knew what their son would be doing, having a band. And he does have a band. And it's called The Other Side of the Story. <laughs> it's heaven. He went from Story Side B to The Other Side of the Story. That was his band. Uh, but in the band, angels were playing and singing with him. Because he said he wouldn't let anyone take the place of his band when they came to heaven, which I told their band. And so his parents called. They were really excited about everything. And, and then I, they gave me their daughter's phone number. He and his sister were really close together. And so I called and just spoke to her for a few minutes. And, and then about, I don't know, it was probably a year later, she called me. She goes, today is my birthday. My 30th birthday, and I just wanted to know, does my brother even remember me? Does he still think about me? Because we had planned a big celebration on this day. We didn't know he'd go home. So I, while well, she's on the phone to me, God caught me up to heaven. And I saw her brother <laughs> standing at a portal. This is going to sound wild, but it doesn't matter. He was throwing Cheetos at her from the portal. And he was singing the worst rendition of Happy Birthday I've ever heard. And this is a guy who sings, was singing for a living, right? Like, man, that's, that's awful. That's awful. <laughs> and then God sends me back. And I'm, I'm, she's still going on the phone. I said, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. I got to tell you. Hey, I don't know what you can think about this, but I got to tell you what, what I just saw in heaven. I saw your brother, and he was throwing Cheetos over the portal at you. And she starts to yell and scream. She goes, that's, that's Ron. That's still my brother. That's still him. She said he would have throw by, run by, uh, what do you want, a Cheeto throwing, whatever. He would, she had her fro too. So he, she said his greatest thing to do was run through the room and throw as many Cheetos in her fro that would stick there. And she said, he did it all the time. And I was so irritated. But now it's the most precious thing in the world that you told me that. Because I know he didn't forget me. This was on her birthday, remember. And I said, oh, I don't know how to tell you this. But he, he sounded the worst I have ever heard. For someone who's anointed to sing, she said, was it the worst happy birthday you ever heard in your life? I went, yeah. She said, he did that every year too. <laughs> so she was so blessed to find out she, that he had not changed. He still remembered her. He was still himself. And she was so blessed by that. So now I've done. There, Jen, I've finished the story. I'm done with that. Okay. So I want to encourage you to understand that 
your family still loves you. No one has forgotten you. They're making plans for you. In this little vapor of time that we're in right now on this earth, use it powerfully to love, to forgive, and to be willing and obedient. I understand John, his last message, love one another. That should be the thing we do the most. Amen? Don't forget to love. If you get a choice, forgive people who are bashing you. When you do that, it really does wound the demons. And it is our time to torment the demons. Say, it's our honor and privilege to torment the demons. Those demons asked Jesus, have you come to torment us before our time? That meant there was going to be a time when they would be tormented. Is that right? But he didn't do that. He gave us power, right? So stand up for a minute. I'm sure that uh, Paul is still enjoying his celebration party. It goes on for quite a while. I know they had something planned for him. For anyone who ever wonders, he made it. No matter what you thought about his life or considered for him, he loved God. He had Christ in his heart. He made mistakes. He repented for them. Amen. And he's highly honored and recognized in heaven for what he did for God. And they're happy to have him home. And so is his mom. Amen. So let's make a declaration. I love to make declarations. Say, Father, thank you for timing my birth on the earth for right now. I expect to receive, to receive the more, the more. To, live the more. to live in the more, to be, be the, more. the more. It is my commission. Is my commission. I'm saying yes, I'm saying yes. Right, now. right now. I want, I want to, be to be chosen. Help me, Help me. to be willing, be willing. And, obedient and obedient and laugh, and laugh. while I do it. I ask for and receive lots of fun. I need fun. Heaven has fun on earth as it is in heaven. I want to be dangerous against hell. The enemy is my doormat. But I am a ruler with Jesus Christ. I am royalty. I am your son or daughter. This is the time I've been waiting for. Amen. Woohoo! Woo! Amen. Sit down. <laughs> Um, do people have children here? Okay. Yeah, I don't want to run too late that I don't get to lay hands on them. If you have children. So maybe in a few minutes, I don't know. What time do they pick them up? Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Wherever they are. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I really want to give an... I know I'm going to do an impartation tomorrow night. But I really would like to do one tonight. And I think instead of talking for another 45 minutes, I'd rather do that. Amen? <laughs> So I um, guess tonight, because tomorrow night I'm probably going to do the lightning power of God. 
Uh, last time I did it, John G. showed up. Um, that's who I call John G. Lake. He did. He came and stood right next to me. Other seers saw him. It was really zap bam time. <laughs> but tonight I really want to give out a measure of the fire. Amen. I've had a measure of baptism in fire. And let me tell you, I've not ever been the same. So I want you to take it home with you. Let it burn on the inside of you. Don't let the fire go out. Uh, what you're really doing is preparing a place for more to come. Say more. more. Say when I receive some of something from God, I can have more. I know there's major things that are about to happen in your lives. Shifts, because this is a time to shift. There's a lot of shifts. The other thing is suddenlies. Those are two different things. A suddenly comes when you least expect it. But just one suddenly can change your life. It will fill you so full of faith. When God moves his hand for you, it's always a good thing. Say, suddenlies, suddenlies. Are, good are good things. Because God is preparing you to receive more of him. Amen? A suddenly just sends you over the edge. <laughs> um, probably about half the time, suddenlies are about uh, finances or wealth. Like, a lot. Not like, wow, someone gave me $100, like a lot. We've had quite a few suddenlies ourselves, so I'm asking God to give you some of those also. Amen? So when I, <laughs> when I impart fire to you, I'm going to add suddenly, okay? Say, I want the suddenlies. Say, I expect them. I'm getting ready for them. I'm serious. I'm serious. I really want it, God. Really want it, God. I'm a suddenly son or daughter. So send it. Yeah. There you go. Now you set yourself up. <laughs> so I just want to get ready to lay hands on people. <laughs> it doesn't matter how old you are. You can have a suddenly and you can also have the fire. Amen. I see some kids running around. They're going to be fierce. <laughs> I'm talking about children. Yeah, I have several uh, grandchildren that already are fierce. So I expect them to be fierce. Amen? Say fierce, fierce. is a good word in this more time of God. It's passionate. Remember, the word says... We take it by force. So don't, do, don't be mediocre. Don't be lukewarm. You have to take it by force. Amen? From the time of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven stirs up and encourages for us to be fierce. Amen? And dangerous. And violent, say violence in the spirit realm is a good thing when we have it. That word suffers does not mean that heaven's being beat up by somebody. However, back to the translations, God said, go read some of the translations and see how they have translated or interpreted that verse. From the time of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. And it literally said people were running into heaven and stealing things. I don't know where they got that. <laughs> heaven is under attack. <laughs> no, I don't believe that for a second. <laughs> it's us who are supposed to be violently passionate against the enemy, and we have the right to take back whatever he has taken from us because he had no right to it. Amen. 
I love giving revelation on the word too. It actually makes sense. Amen? Train up your child in the gift God put in them, whether it's a drummer or a baker or an interior designer, and they'll never depart from that gift because they'll be doing the thing they love the most. That word in there says, uh, train up a child in the bent or the way he made them. That means who he sent you as, what gift he made you and sent you here. Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights. And God said, everybody sits on the pew or the chair every Sunday trying to figure out what their spiritual gift is. But one of the most important gifts he gave you is your natural gift. Your passion, what you love, what he made you to be or do in this earth, that's not your job. It's the thing you're the most passionate about. You know your child is a drummer. If they beat everything, everything they have, they beat on the table with it. You know, straws, spoons, forks, whatever it is. You buy them a farm. You know, the farm is set for Christmas, and they pick them up and start beating on something with them. The cow and the horse, here they go. Take them in a restaurant. They use the straws, take them outside so they'll be quiet, and then they break branches off the bush and start drumming with the bush. Say, I think... They're a drummer. So raise them up as a drummer. And they'll never run around in the world trying to figure out who they are. Does that scripture make sense? It's a revelation. That's how important your natural gift is. Because when you go to heaven, he plans to use it. It's irrevocable. You're meant to be a baker, make the best brownies or whatever it is you make. Everybody in the neighborhood loves them. That Everybody tells you to sell them. When you go home to heaven, you're going to make that. And everybody will have it for free. And everybody will love you. They have rodeos, amusement parks. Because people have gifts that do that. Is that right? That's why we have fun in heaven. And it, it's so natural. They walk in heaven. And here's all the stuff they need to design and to put together something that won't take forever to make it. If you're going to be a baker as part of your mansion, you have a full-out kitchen with supernatural devices to use and all the supplies you need. And then out in the front, you have a bakery where everybody comes by to eat your stuff. Jesus will visit you regularly. <laughs> he has a sweet tooth. That's why he liked honeycomb. Remember when we served on the beach to his disciples? Remember he served them a meal? He gave them what? Fish and... Say honey. <laughs> what did his cousin eat? Locust and? It ran in the family. Say I'm in the family. Now I know why I have a sweet tooth. <laughs> Amen. Okay, we're going, to, we're going to do this. Amen. So I guess you can get people organized. Unless I tell everybody to come one row at a time. And I'm going to come down here. You're going to walk up to me. I'm going to just zap you with the fire of God. <laughs> and then what do you want them to do next? Do you want them to come and sit? Yeah, Margaret's telling them. I couldn't do this without Margaret. Or actually my team, really. I have a team. I have like 15 people. And I don't do this by myself. Amen. Every now and then I'm going to go, okay, I'm sending you this time. You get up on the platform and speak. <laughs> And so I really do bless my team God gave me, amen. He's using teams in this time. Uh, the day of the Lone Ranger is coming to a close, amen. We're going to need each other. We're going to work together, amen. And so I'm going to give this microphone to somebody. And then I'm going to come down here and lay hands on you. <laughs> Don't forget to come tomorrow night. It's going to be amazing, exciting. Walk sideways, you'll never fall. <laughs> and then I'm going to declare, uh, declare a blessing over you when we're, when we're done, okay? Unless I should do it first, because I don't know what you want him to do next. <laughs> do the blessing first? That would be really wise, because some of you may not be walking. <laughs> I'll hold your hands out. Father, I ask you as your daughter that loves you forever. 
and you love everyone here. It is your heart to bless, to inspire, to empower, to get ready for some of the greatest days this earth will ever experience. I'm asking you from my heart to theirs to bless them abundantly. Show them your goodness. Many times over through all of next month, I thank you, God, the unbelievable, unexpected from sources they never thought would give to them. Whether it's lands, buildings, money, 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 big money, extravagant money, extreme extravagant money. <laughs> We're coming to you, Daddy. And I'm asking you to reach deep in your pockets, which are endless, to bless them beyond what they ever imagined. Let them have an experience part of the suddenlies that are coming to them. Let them have the more that we've been talking about, not just in money and lands, buildings, but in revelation and restoration and healings, divine health. Everyone say, I receive it. I want them to have that on top of whatever measure of the fire you want to give them, God. Let them begin to burn for you. Don't drive if it happens. I mean, in the middle of the night, sometimes it comes. We've had people call us, what am I going to do? Enjoy it. But I'm burning. I've been in the shower five times, and I'm still burning. I'm going to let it burn. It's from heaven. It's going to be okay. I'm laughing. I'm dancing. I'm like, what, what, what do I do? I said, just enjoy it. This is from your father. This is a gift. It's a gift. So this is the time for suddenlies. Regardless of age, regardless of their denomination or non-denomination, regardless of their position in life, regardless of what people think of them, just because you love them, I ask you to bless them. Say amen. amen. Here you go. <laughs> Normally we have them come one row at a time. Okay, let's okay. do that then. Okay. And, um, All right. <clears throat> All right, we're going to do one row at a time. Um, man, I'm really starting to feel it. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know about you, man, but I've been praying for the fire. And uh, I've been, uh, you know, I know um, we got to have a personal revival before we can have a corporate revival. And uh, one's just one spark starts a forest fire, man. And why not us be the spark that will set California on fire? You know, come on. I honestly believe this is a supernatural week for, for obvious reasons. And I honestly believe if you're hungry... Not just looking for, uh, you know, something fun, but if you really want to be set ablaze uh, to change earth right now. And I love, it. I love what Kat said. We were born for a time such as this. This is our watch. And this is, I think this is, we're, we're entering into, into the greatest period of, of all history. And God chose us to be a part of that. But we got to burn we got to be on fire. So let's, let's do one row, row at a time, and let's just start, let's start with the first row. Why not? So um, only if you're hungry. Jen's reminding again, don't forget the Facebook, friends. Where, Get the fire. Right here? Right this one right here. Okay. Facebook camera's right there. They will demand. They will demand to have whatever you're going to get. Is that okay? <laughs> okay. So first, I'm going to. And the blessing I spoke was for everyone watching. So say, I receive it. Everyone, on, they'll all say it on. They'll all online. And now I'm going to give them the fire of God. Okay. And what else did I say? The what? The suddenlies. I kind of include that in there, but I'll still say it. So I'll let you hold that for me. All right. So you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Father, I impart the fire! The fire! 
The fire, the fire, the fire. Consume them. Let them burn for you. And suddenly, amen. Woohoo! I <laughs> say, I'll receive it. Okay. So when you come up here and line up, we're going to line up like facing one way. And Margaret will demonstrate. <laughs> like, yeah. So are you me or am I you? <laughs> You're imparting to me. <laughs> and that was my natural mind speaking. You just had a demonstration of the natural mind. <laughs> yeah, when you come up, just have your hands ready. And the line, move really fast, and we'll get this done really quickly. Yeah. So um, you people at the end here, if you can start coming this way, and then just go back to your seat or go out. I'm going to get out to the products table as soon as I can if you're interested in products. So. God, we have we, we have products. <laughs> I'll explain about that tomorrow night. But yeah, I'm actually not doing that tonight. I'm doing that tomorrow night. I'm actually just gonna lay my hand on. I'm laying my hand on you right here. Do I have permission? Yeah, I want to send it right in there. Okay, I'm just gonna walk up and I'm gonna go fire. <laughs> I'm gonna go fire, fire, fire. <laughs> And then I'll go, and suddenly, <laughs> there you go. Woo, I'm already getting wiped out, everybody. Okay, you ready? Oh, here we go. Okay. Father, I impart the fire, 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 and suddenly, <laughs> I'm already hot. i <laughs> one person. Doesn't mean you have to fall down, but if you do, we'll step over, okay? <laughs> Father, I impart the fire, 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 and the suddenly of God. Father, I impart the fire, 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 and the suddenlies of God. <laughs> it looks like blue fire shooting out of me like a blowtorch. If you want a picture, there's a picture, okay? <laughs> Father, I impart the fire, 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 and the suddenlies of God. Father, I impart the fire. Fire! Fire! And the suddenlies ah! of God. Ah! Ah! The fire! Fire! <laughs> Come on, I'm not done. Life. Fire! And the suddenlies of God. <laughs> Father, I impart the fire! 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 And the suddenlies of God. Father, I impart the fire, 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 and the suddenlies of God. Father, I impart the fire, 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 and the suddenlies of God. <laughs> Father, I impart the fire, 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 and the suddenlies of God. Father, I impart the fire, 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 and the suddenlies of God. Father, I impart the fire, 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 and the suddenlies of God. Father, I impart the fire, 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 and the suddenlies of God. Father, I impart the fire, 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 and the suddenlies of God. Father, I impart the fire, 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 and the suddenlies of God. Father, I impart the fire, 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 and the suddenlies of God. Father, I impart the fire, 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 and the suddenlies of God. Father, I impart the fire, 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 and the suddenlies of God. Father, I impart the fire, 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 and the suddenlies of God. Father, I impart the fire, 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 and the suddenlies of God. Father, I impart the fire, 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 and the suddenlies of God. Father, I impart the fire, 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 and the suddenlies of God. I impart the fire, 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 and the suddenlies of God. Father, I impart the fire, 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 and the suddenlies of God. Father, I impart the fire, fire, fire. 
And the sun. And the sunnies of God. There you go. Yeah, just step over. Father, I impart the fire, 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 and the sunnies of God. Father, I impart the fire, 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 and the sunnies of God. Father, I impart the fire, 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 and the sunnies of God. I receive it. <laughs> Father, I impart the fire, 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 and the sunnies of God. I receive it. Father, I impart the fire, 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 and the sunnies of God. Father, I impart the fire, 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 and the sunnies of God. I impart the fire, 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 and the sunnies of God. Father, I impart the fire, 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 and the sunnies of God. Father, I impart the fire, 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 and the sunnies of God. Father, I impart the fire, 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 and the sunnies of God. <laughs> 